from Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, and rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Merry Christmas to you. We're excited to be here this evening. We're so glad that you have decided to join us for our very special Christmas Eve service here at Faith Christian Fellowship. My name is Gordon McDaniel. I serve as lead pastor here and it's my, gr my great privilege to welcome you and to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who we celebrate his first advent here tonight. We're so glad that you have chosen to be with us and we welcome you today. We want to do that this evening. We want to prepare the way of the Lord in our own way, certainly God's Word inspired by the Holy Spirit, but we here gathered as His people want to prepare the way for the Lord tonight in our own special way. Again, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may tonight's service be a special, glor uh, an act of glorifying Him tonight. Thanks for being here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read out of Micah 5.2, but I'm going to start in Matthew. Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse 1, says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes and the people, he inquired, of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who, who will shepherd my people Israel. So here we, we have the, the first kind of arrival, right, of the, of the wise men. And we, we always think of the wise men in the nativity scene, uh, but the truth is they weren't in the nativity scene. They came along a little bit later. But here's where they pop on the scene, right? And they'd seen this star, and so they're traveling along, and they get, they get into uh, to Bethlehem, and they're, they're in that region, and, and they go to Herod, and they say, hey, we saw the star, and we've come to worship the king of the Jews. But it only took them that far, and they, and they went to Herod, and they said, where is he? Where is he? And Herod, of course, we see here, kind of gets a little nervous, which is understandable, right? He was the king. And here they're talking about another king. And so Herod, who was not a Jew, calls for the scribes and the chief priests who would know the answer to this, right? And they bring him in and, and he says, he says where, where will the Messiah be born? This is what we're looking for. And they, and they quote Micah 5, 2, because they knew it. It was, not, it was not something that would be hidden from them. And this is what Micah 5, 2 says. And he, he, he kind of combines 5, 2, and 4. Uh, when we read that in Matthew, it says, But you, O Bethlehem, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Some translations will say from eternity. And then four says, And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. So he's quoting this passage that was written 700 years before Jesus was born. That is a lot of years. You think, what was going on 700 years from now, like earlier, 700 years ago? The United States wasn't even an idea in anyone's head, right? That's how long ago 700 years is. And that's how far back this prophecy had been written. We so often think that Christmas started in the manger, Right? We do. We think, oh, it started in, in the manger, and, and we think that, that that's where it all kind of uh, began, and, and, and everything changed from there. Now, it's true that everything changed from there, but it's not true that it began there, right? It didn't begin there. If, if this passage was written 700 years before Jesus was even born, there had to have been something going on. There had to have been something going on. And our minds often wander to, to gifts and lights and decorations and all these things at Christmas time, right? And that's 
That's okay. I love the lights and I love the gifts and I love the decorations. But we know that's not what it's about. So if we try really hard, we're like, okay, I'm going to concentrate on what it really is about. I'm going to meditate on that. Sometimes we picture the nativity. Sometimes we picture this little baby Jesus. And, and that's a great thing. But we can back up even further from that. Even fur- further from that and know that, that Christmas... Which is, which is God becoming man, right? Becoming flesh and walking among us. Christmas has dwelled in the mind of God for eternity. That is so cool to think about. It has dwelled in the mind of God for all of eternity. Last week, we, um, if you were here with us, uh, we did a Christmas program. Uh, and it was really, really cool. It was great. Uh, my daughter was the best. Both of them. But everybody else did great too. And there was, there was one, uh, one actor who, who stood there at, near the beginning of it and, and she said, we try so hard to make Christmas happen. We forget that it has already happened. I'm like, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And we do. We try so hard to run around the hustle and bustle and, and try to make Christmas happen and we forget that it has already happened. And here in, in Micah chapter 5, we get this glimpse, just a glimpse into the magnificence of God and his eternal plan of salvation. That plan by, by delivering the only provision there is for our sins in the form of a perfect little child given to us. What an unimaginable, unimaginable gift. Kyle said he had sticky notes on his Bible. I only have eight pages. Of course, there's only four words on each page, so it won't take too long. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Beautiful passage from Isaiah 7.14. And just to give you a little glimpse uh, into that time, King Ahaz was very disturbed that the other kings uh, were plotting evil against Judah, Jerusalem, and he was very fearful, very anxious, and God sent the prophet Isaiah to speak to him to give him words of encouragement. So in Isaiah, it says, because these kings have plotted evil against you, saying, let us go against Judah and trouble it and we will set a king over them. But I, the Lord God, will say, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. God has spoken, amen? But what's interesting is at the end of that passage, he says, if you will not believe, surely you will not be established. If you will not believe, surely you will not be established. So obviously this didn't help because Isaiah again had to speak to King Ahaz and he said, well, go ahead and ask the Lord for a sign. Ask him for anything, anything you want. As far as heaven, ask him for anything. Ahaz says, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Isaiah says, come on, man, you're you're really starting to weary me, and you even weary God himself. So therefore, the Lord himself is going to send you a sign. Behold, the young woman or the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So spoken, as Brother Kyle mentioned, spoken hundreds of years before the actual birth, of Jesus. And again, this was quoted uh, by the angel. But one of the most interesting things I find in that passage, if you will not believe, surely you will not be established. So he says, you will call the name of the child Emmanuel, God with us. Supposed to be a great encouragement to Ahaz, as it was to the people Uh, when Jesus was born, and to us today as we realize that God is with us. And now we celebrate this Christmas season as he was born a child, came into this world as a baby, pure, perfect, sinless, 
God incarnate, God the Spirit being now brought in the likeness of men in flesh and bone, a child born physically human, but yet God at the same time. It's interesting in the book of Philippians chapter 2, Paul speaking of Christ, who says, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Yes, all the power, all the authority, all the glory and experience of God is now with us to live alongside of us, being a, at that time, a touchable, seeable God to the earth. Is it any wonder that many people at that time didn't get it, didn't understand when Jesus claimed to be the Son of Man, but also the Son of God? But again, you must learn to believe what the Lord says. So we find in Matthew, as we look more directly at the birth of Christ, which should have been marked earlier, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being roused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and she, he called his name Jesus. But I thought the name was supposed to be Emmanuel. Did Mary and Joseph get confused? Well, actually, we find many names for Jesus as we look in the Bible. Also in the book of Isaiah, as a prophet was speaking in chapter 9, he calls him Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. In some Bibles, you will see wonderful and counselor separated by a comma. Other Bibles, you'll see the two words together as if wonderful was complementing counselor, and it could be. But I just prefer to look at that word wonderful by itself, because my Jesus is wonderful, amen? And you look up the definition of wonderful, full of wonder, full of amazement, magnificent, all the words that describe this wonderful, astonishing, delightful gift to the world. And not necessarily because of what he has done for us, but just because of who he is. Other passages call in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, indicating that he has dominion over all. He sets all in authority and he directs them as he pleases. He is also the light of the world, bringing us the light that will result in us having our eyes opened so that we can walk in the light. He is the Prince of Peace, providing that bridge between God and man. He is the Son of God, only begotten of the Father, but he is the Son of Man, proving his humanity. He is the Word who spoke all things out of nothing in the creation. And he was in the beginning with God the Father and was God and by whom all things were created. He is the word of life, referring to eternal life of joy and fulfillment, which he provides. He is the bread of life, just as bread sustains us in a physical sense. Jesus is the bread that gives and sustains eternal life. He is the deliverer, able to deliver us from the bondage of sin. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and cares for and feeds us. 
He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He is the rock on which we build our spiritual house so that our foundation will be firm and not shaken. He is the resurrection and the life so that our sin can be buried with him and we are resurrected to walk in newness of life. He is our Savior who has saved us from the wrath of God and from sin's curse. He is the true vine that gives life to the branches. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the only path to God, the only truth in this world of lies, and the only true source of eternal life. He is our Messiah. He is our Redeemer. He is the door, the only way into heaven, and the indescribable gift that's mentioned in 2 Corinthians 9. But yet we go back to what was formerly said, if you do not believe, you will not be established. So it is our prayer at Faith Christian Fellowship that you this year, if you have never been established in the person of Jesus Christ, that you would accept and believe and be rooted and grounded in faith as he is our only means of salvation. Emmanuel, God is with us. He is for us. He is beside us. He is before us, in front of us, behind us, within us, and among us. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Feliz cumpleaños. En esta noche en todo el mundo hay gente diciendo esta frase. A little something from uh, Central America. Diane and I both had the privilege to spend Christmas in both Nicaragua and Costa Rica and uh, it's, it's great to be back, though. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to be reading Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice before the harvest, as warriors rejoice dividing the plunder. For, in the day, for as in the day of Midian, de, Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For for Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he, was, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The greatness of his government and the peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the mighty, our mighty God, this will accomplish this. In reading this, Mike kind of stole the, the names of God. That, uh, but I, and, and thinking about this, I thought that, you know, God, when Jesus came, he did not, he was not created at that point. He existed from eternity God brought him here as a newborn child, but Jesus existed from the very beginning. We see the names here. We see Everlasting Father. So the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Wonderful, the Counselor, the Prince of Peace came down in the form of a child on Christmas. And all around the world tonight, there's people celebrating the birth of Jesus and we, too, celebrate the coming of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the mighty Counselor, this evening. Thank you. So I have been attending Christmas Eve services since I was probably two years old, or maybe before that. I don't know. By God's grace, he put me in a family 
that love the Lord Jesus, mother and dad, they love the Lord Jesus, they loved each other, and they love me. And they said there really is no greater place to be than among God's people to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. There really is no better place to be than to be there. And as you can imagine, and many of you, as, if your parents here tonight and you have little ones that are pulling and tugging on your pant leg or are crawling under the seats right now at this very moment, just as I was 40 years ago, you might think, will this ever dig down deep into the heart of this child, this, my, my beloved child, my son or my daughter? Well, allow me to be a testimony of God's grace and the hope that the time, all of those years, that I would have rather been doing something else, so I thought, on this special night of Christmas Eve in anticipation of Emmanuel, God with us, now 40 years later I find myself realizing there is no better place to be. I want to thank Pastor Kyle and Pastor Mike, Pastor David, I asked them if they would give a portion of their heart to this celebration. For Sarah and Debbie on the music, for the men's ensemble, for even Karen back in our AV booth, I want to publicly thank them because in those 45 years now of Christmas Eve services, I don't think I've enjoyed one more than I have now. I've enjoyed them as much, but certainly not more. And I'm thankful to each one of them, and I'm thankful to you that you have helped to make tonight special for me and my family that is seated here and even now. I read to you, I read to you out of Isaiah chapter 40 when we started this service, that a voice cries out in the wilderness, make way the path of the Lord. That is reiterated in Matthew chapter 1. If you have your copy of God's Word, I invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 1. Or the the fulfillment of that is shared in Matthew chapter 1. Tonight, a little bit unusually with our family dynamic, I want to be reading from the New International Version. That's a little bit unusual for me, but a good one nonetheless. The NIV from Matthew chapter 1, excuse me, I I said Matthew, I mean Luke chapter 1, so I'll give you an extra minute to turn there, sorry. Luke chapter 1. Again, reading from the NIV, Luke 1, beginning in verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, the highest of callings that Zechariah was, was carrying out, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. He was chosen by lot. He was chosen by chance, is that true? God had his hand all over this, and he was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. An angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. The angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will never, he is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even 
before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. If you're a mom or a dad or a grandparent that is here today, put yourself in the place of Zachariah or Elizabeth. The privilege, first and foremost, of serving as priest before God. To represent God to the people and to seek forgiveness on behalf of the people back to God. And you are visited by an angel who says, I love it, near the end of what I've just read. I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God. And I am here to bring you this very, very good news. Think for a moment, first and foremost as a priest... To be a mediator between God and men of the highest order. And as Luke records for us, he was a righteous man. He and Elizabeth both were righteous. Husband and wife. But up until this point, they were without child. And they served their responsibilities faithfully. It's hard for us to imagine what it means to be a priest what it means to be a mediator between God and men if we think only in terms of an an Israelite priest. God makes very clear in his word that all of us, those who are believers in Jesus Christ, serve as the royal priesthood. Mediators between God and men. But even if in your mind you imagine Zechariah and Elizabeth, you imagine this idea that that what it means to be a mediator, and then on top of that, you are told this, your child will prepare the way of the Lord. What would we long for more than that? There are children all through this room tonight. That your child will prepare the way of the Lord. One of the things that I think about is, with children so very present in our experience tonight, and really this entire gift-oriented celebration being surround, being captured in the heart of a child. And we think for a moment that Zechariah and Elizabeth were given a responsibility to raise a child, and it's described very clearly how they are to raise him, isn't it? John is to be cared for meticulously, Because he will have a very specific task. He will prepare the way of the Lord. Imagine the excitement. Imagine the wonder. Zechariah even says, How is this possible? For I am old, as is my wife. Surely we cannot have children at this time of at this age, can we? And then, as I quoted a moment ago, and we read that great statement, I am. Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God, and I'm here to deliver you this good news. What is the good news? Well, I've painted a picture that is it in fact that John would be the the predecessor to to Jesus? Is is that what the good news is? Well, for a, a barren couple, there might be some measure of that that, well, first and foremost, We get to have a son, and not only do we get to have a son, but that son is going to be so very important. But is that really what the good news is? You see, Zechariah was a priest, as I've already mentioned. His responsibility was to mediate between God and men. And he is given the best news in the world. God is coming to you. God is coming to you. Emmanuel, God with us. Zechariah hears what the good news is. 
Is it that you will have a son? Sure, that's great news. Is it that he will be a a herald of good things, bringing back God's people, the people of Israel, to a heart of repentance? Absolutely. But what is the real good news? That he is preparing the way of the Lord. My heart for you tonight as we celebrate Christmas Eve together as a church family and for those of you that are guests with us, we're so glad that you are here to celebrate as well, is to hear the special good news that is spoken. And she will call his name Emmanuel. Even a priest and his wife, barren as they were to that point, being given the privilege to raise their child, to raise him with a prominent responsibility, there is still good news that he is specifically bringing, and that is that God is on his way. That is the good news. All of the things that we read tonight were the anticipation, the prophecy, a handful of those places that are so familiar to us in the Old Testament that promise that this is going to happen. And Zechariah is merely the next step in that progression of the Lord coming. If you remember so very well, what happens when John and Jesus meet down by the river? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That was John's message. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We all have the opportunity to be those Isaiah 40 heralds. Now, yes, it was specific to John the Baptist. And it was specific to this first advent of Jesus. The good news of which Gabriel spoke. But there is a second advent. There is another advent. Return. There is another coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if we are willing, as Mike said, even that idea of being established, what a great statement that is. But if you do not, you will never be established. We get the privilege of having been in between the two advents. John serves as the herald of the first. The church The people of God are given the great privilege of serving as the herald, the heralds of his second coming. He will come back. Because he came once, he will come again. And we celebrate that here tonight. As we close, I'm going to, in just a moment, close in prayer. And our men's ensemble is going to come and and lead us out in the enjoyment of what this night ultimately represents. We want to invite you, if you have no church home, specifically that you are looking forward to attending in the morning, and I'll share more about this tomorrow, but we would invite you to come back here to Faith Christian Fellowship if you don't have another place to be a part of God's family or with your own family as it exists. At 1045 in the morning, we invite you. So if today is anticipation, tomorrow, the celebration. All of it is celebratory, but there is that that wonder in the waiting. I'm not going to embarrass you and tell you who that was. Embarrass me or embarrass him. But it will. No. I don't think I've ever carried my phone up here. How about that? Shoo! What to do, what to do. But if you don't have a church home in the morning at 1045, we invite you to come and be a part of God's family for this joyous weekend of celebration. 1045 here at Faith Christian Fellowship. You get to be a herald. You get to enjoy the, the journey of His first advent. And you get to be a herald that He is coming again. Would you pray with me, and men, would you come forward? Father God, we are so grateful. We're so grateful that you have invited us into your story. 
that you invited us to be among those who speak the good news. First, that Jesus has come, Emmanuel, God with us. And secondly, that you will be with us for eternity. You will send forth your Son again. This time, not as a baby, but as a conquering King. God, we are overwhelmed by the two advents of Jesus. His first, as recorded in Scripture, and His second, also promised to us in the Word of God that He will return. Tonight, we await his, the celebration of His first arrival with anticipation. May His name be lifted up in all that is done and said this evening. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.